Good evening, everyone. It is August 28, 2020. My name is Fassel. I'm the head equities analyst over at the Alpha Trades. If you don't know who we are and, and this is your first time watching our YouTube videos, uh, go ahead and check us out at thealphatrades.com to get a better sense of who we are. We are an online community that specializes in, in primarily crypto and uh, stock market opinions, and, and we use our own analysis in order to uh, make those opinions and uh, it's not financial advice. It's nothing like that. You should always check your check with your broker before you make an investment decision, but we operate through a discord and I like to think that we have everything fairly organized um, when it comes to crypto and stock market um, areas. So you have, you know, Bitcoin right here. You have altcoin, all these different channels. Uh, you have DeFi. I don't really know what that is. I'm not a crypto guy. Um, but you have all these different channels right here for um, different cryptos besides Bitcoin. Um, and then you also have my stuff, which is equity trading. I do a lot of day-to-day um, -day analysis, uh, kind of just highlighting what I see in the morning. And then usually I wrap it up in a post at the end um, towards the close of the market or even after the close. I also provide uh, stock alerts. So these are stocks that meet my technical criteria and, uh, you know, so far they, they've come out very good, but lately it's not been as hot of a ride for these alerts because, and especially for myself too, because I've been primarily shorting tech and uh, so far it has not gone my way. In fact, you know, tech had a really, really strong week today off of some very key earnings from Salesforce and um, Autodesk and Intuit. And today we got Okta. There were a lot of uh, high growth stocks that, that came out with earnings this week. And, and uh, it really propelled a lot of the momentum that you saw, not only just in high growth, but in tech in general. I think the XLK was up, um, yeah, four and a half percent, rest in peace to my options. I mean, it was a really, really strong week for tech altogether. Now, I do think that we may have reached an area where it, it needs to pull back even more. Um, you saw a little bit of weakness today in some of the leaders like uh, Shopify was down 1%. Um, I believe Tesla was also down a little bit. Let me see. Tesla was also down and I think Amazon was also down too. No, Amazon was slightly flat. Okay, um, so you had a lot of this weakness stemming from uh, some of the leadership, but for the most part, a lot of the stocks still look good. Even if the leaders are extended, they're still holding up their, their uh, short-term momentum trends. And, and that's the mistake that I think that I made is, is I tried to pretty much guess that these, these momentum trends were going to break down before they had actually broken down and, and it really bit me in the butt. So at this point I have, you know, I still have my Roku short, I have my Coop short, um, I have my XLK short. Those three things are really, especially Roku. Roku ran up uh, a lot, and I'll get that to that in a little bit. But um, those three tech shorts have really been uh, fairly strong this week. De definitely Roku and Coop. Um, uh, actually, Coop, let me see what weekly. What did it do weekly? Yeah, up 8%. Yeah, see, I mean, so they had phenomenally good weeks. Workday also had a very good earnings quarter and, and was up 20 plus percent. Um, so when you have events like that and, and the, the stocks really outperform, I guess, I haven't read Workday's report, but in, in regards to, to Salesforce, they really, uh, not only did they beat on, on current quarter estimates, but they proved to analysts that they can still grow uh, next year, even in, in an environment that looks a little bit shaky, which was, I think, the big question that everyone thought was, has the compression of, of software adoption already happened or is there still room to grow? And I think uh, Salesforce made it clear from their uh, guidance that there's definitely room to grow. So that in turn took all these stocks up and, um, you know, in regards to Roku, even though that stock has nothing to do with software um, adoption or anything like that, it does, you know, it is a high growth stock and it's done phenomenally well this week, despite me shorting it, you know, coming into the week, I was, uh, I was up, I want to say 2% or something. I think Tuesday I was up 2% and now I'm down, you know, around 15% on the stock. And it's just been, it's been a very, very tough, uh, tough ride so far, but 
now is not the time to show or to, to cover. Now is not the time, in my opinion, to cover any of these stocks. Um, but I definitely have my eyes set on on covering at much higher levels than I was planning on. I, I was really expecting a lot of these stocks to trade down. As I said before, I was expecting tech entirely to pull down and um, that just didn't happen. So I have to raise my targets. Uh, but ultimately uh, covering here is kind of like panicking. Um, there will always be an opportunity to cover. There will always be a pullback. Sometimes I think in this market it's a little bit tricky because it, it may be one or two days of pulling back, harsh pulling back. And that's when you have to cover if you got stuck on the wrong foot like me. Um, but nonetheless, covering here is really kind of going into the panic and that's not something that I do. So, you know, these trades, I had high hopes for them, but at this point I'm already chalking them up as a loss. Like I don't, I don't think I'm going to make profit in them at all. And, and unless I see real breakdowns in the leadership, uh, in the tech high growth leadership, I probably will look to cover these guys for a loss. So that's my that's my take on on Coop XLK and, and um, Roku uh, as far as what I'm doing with them. Um, another thing that I realized today was so I have a, this pen and or uh, shortened pen that's that's doing fairly well. I think I shorted it initially at like close to 53, and and then I just shorted it a little bit more. I think I stopped shorting it at 56 and a half, and went all the way up to like 59. I was I was getting a little bit worried, but. Uh, Penn was very, I think we got a lot of information about what Penn is being valued as, which I think is very interesting. Um, and I think it, it definitely is a case for debate. Penn was one of the stocks, you know, coming into this pre-COVID era, it, it moved with the casinos. It moved with stocks like LVS, um, MGM, uh, Wynn. It moved with all the big casinos and, and usually it's momentum was tied to that industry momentum. Just as, you know, when Las Vegas Sands moves up, usually when moves up, like we can go ahead and check today. Um, when was up 5%. Let's go ahead and check out Las Vegas Sands up three and a half percent. Let's go ahead and check out MGM up four and a half percent, more than four and a half percent, but let's go ahead and check out Penn. Penn was down two and a half percent. And that's not just cause it's probably the most overextended casino stock by a long shot. Um, Penn is really, and I, and I just figured this out, but Penn is actually being valued as a online gaming company. And it didn't, it didn't hit me till now um, until I saw the cycles of how it traded with DraftKings. So DraftKings is a, you guys have heard me talk about it. It is a online um, betting, betting app where you can play fantasy football, but betting style and it's a really fun, it's a really fun app. I played it personally and, and it's, it's a great product, but uh, it definitely has a lot of risks, especially when uh, you have news headlines like the NBA playoffs could be canceled or something like that. It's really not the best asset to own, even though it's, it's kind of a digital asset. And even as casinos close um, and people can't go anywhere to bet, you would think betting online would be a good, uh, a good play, but if there's no sports going on, then then there's really no point in, in playing that online uh, platform. So DraftKings got really hit today. I think there was a downgrade by an analyst uh, talking about the industry. And he actually downgraded. I believe the analyst also downgraded Penn as a result. Now, you may think, oh, okay, so he downgraded Penn, and that's probably why the stock was down. But no. This stock was has actually been for the past week or two weeks has actually been moving with DraftKings, especially yesterday. Yesterday, before the the um, you know before the news came out today, the, the downgrade came out this morning. Yesterday, I was watching this stock and I was watching it in relation to DraftKings, and I could not believe how much it was moving um, in unity with DraftKings, and it differed from from how Las Vegas Sands would move or Wynn would move. It was a very paradigm shift and i think um out of everything that i've been hearing about pen and and why it's getting bought and why analysts are upgrading they're all pointing to the barstool application and and the betting uh potential and which is crazy because i didn't believe that they would actually take this stock up because of that i thought maybe it could be you know a lot of retail hype or post um you know people buying it for the next three, four, or five years, even though there are other casinos that that are largely better on a fundamental basis, 
Um, I just thought the market was was weird in that sense. But now I've realized that it's buying it because um, it's being viewed as an online plan. I think that's very dangerous because they still have a ton of assets, hard assets um, that are casinos and resorts and gaming machines or whatnot. They do have a portfolio um, of mobile gambling applications. And I think they're growing that too, especially with the acquisition of Barstool. But um, I think it's crazy to just ignore the fact that they still have a ton of assets that are distressed, that are bleeding cash. And yet this stock is continuing to make all time highs. And just now, especially after the Abbott uh, testing, the 50 minute testing, what you've seen over the past two days since that news came out is that airlines have rallied, cruises have rallied, and casinos have rallied. Well, it's very strange in the past two days, Penn has actually declined um, compared to everything else. And so I think once again, this is just another case that you had a lot of hype into this stock, especially a lot of hype into a certain area of the stock. And I think people who are buying the stock forget that there are a lot of assets that are still distressed. And even though now um, that we're seeing momentum in the in the casinos, and, and that's still primarily the main business of Penn, I think you are going to see a rebalancing out of, of that stock as it starts to come back to normalcy. Um, because it's, it's inversely traded with the casinos um, for a little bit. And I think if it continues, especially into next week, where I expect casinos, airlines, and, and cruises to continue to go up, um, that'll definitely be telling. And, and I may end up adding even more short to that if uh, things look good enough. Okay, and then after, so we've talked about the, what happened today, high growth. <clears throat> high growth actually did very, um, very well this morning, kind of teetered off towards the end, but uh, overall it was, it was a good day. It was definitely a good day, a, a better day for value. You had uh, value sectors like aerospace and defense that uh, were up one per, or close to 1%. You had energy up. 2%, you had financials up half a percent, but then again, financials had a monstrous week. I think they were up four and a half percent the entire week. Yeah, they had a, an amazing week. Uh, industrials were up 1%, and then you had, I think, tech up 0.8%. Okay, so tech actually did fairly good. I think it was just, um, I, I was just looking at uh, a lot of um, the high growth leaders that, that were looking shaky, but for the most part, okay. Tech did fine today, and I think, um, you know, continuing to move forward, tech could see a couple more days of where, where uh, you have these stocks produce great earnings that it ends up leading their respective industries. Um, you know, we saw a little bit of that. This we, we actually saw a lot of industry momentum throughout the week. You saw it with the medical device companies when Abbott came out with um, their testing equipment, I believe it was two days ago. So you see this jump one, two, okay, so yeah, it was two days ago. And then you also see this jump in Boston Scientific, which is one that we are in right now. Um, you saw this gap up right here, it went up, I think four and a half percent. You saw Medtronic also have a nice run up in the last two days as a result of uh, the momentum that Abbott is generating. Um, same thing for well, what you saw in the software sector, we already know what, what happened. Um, even when Salesforce reported, uh, back three days ago, you had stocks, you know, another undervalued set, um, software stock that I've, I've been telling people about was Workday. Workday gapped from, what was it? Close, the close, the last was 194. It went from 194 to 214 the next day. Um, that's, that's a 20 point jump. That's almost 10%. So, uh, this industry momentum has really been something that's, that's been relevant in the market, at least recently. And, and it's definitely something that I'll continue to look forward to. Um, like I said earlier, I think industry regards, I think as the market moves to more industry type momentum, it's going to be more specific in what goes up and what goes down. But I think just like this week, you're going to get very volatile sessions. So I think airlines, cruises, a lot of the bailout stocks now that I, I truly think this testing, 15 minute testing is going to be a game changer. Um, so I really think these airlines and all these bailout stocks, definitely Marriott Vacations, keep an eye on this one. This, this is a fundamentally great stock, uh, VAC. This is one that I may look to take a shot on, even though it's a distress, definitely a distressed stock with, with potentially large headwinds. Um, it's a fundamentally great company. And, and I think if they 
bounce back like they say they will. Like, I mean, they're expected to make $5.72 in 2021. I think that's, that's very good, um, especially if they can continue the uptrend from there. Um, so Marriott Vacations, Royal Caribbean, Southwest Airlines, I think all three of those are, are pretty good plays for the bailout industries. Um, I also think, you know, like we saw this week, value had a very good week. Um, and I think this momentum could be carried over. At, I don't, I'm not going to say that tech is going to pull back as a result, but I think tech is so even more extended, like the parts that weren't extended. Salesforce was one of the least extended software stocks and it ended up gapping up like crazy. Same with Workday, gapping up like crazy. Now that I don't know if I can find any non-extended tech stocks except in the semi space like most of most of the stuff is very extended at this point i'm expecting some pause or pullback or something like that but i don't at this point i'm not really hoping for the big decline i think it's definitely possible but i'm i'm not expecting it and i'm i don't think i'm going to position myself um in accordance to that so i i believe the best way to play next week is like i said the bailout stocks but also, maybe the semis. I think semis, if, if you still like tech, you still want to be in tech. I think AMAT is one that's coming down to a fair price. Um, Xilinx is one that we got in yesterday, I believe. Uh, that's one that's not really extended. Still has a lot more room to go. And AYX was one that I entered in a couple of days ago. Sold off before it had a or sold out before it had this nice pop. But uh, this is what I'm keeping my eye on because if high growth does take a break, this is one of the least extended, um, definitely the most oversold high growth stock. And when I do get, when we do see the pullback in high growth, because it will come, we just don't know the degree that it's going to happen. But when it does come, I want to see if this stock can maintain its, its base level or if it continues to break down even lower if, if high growth starts to sell off. Um, how they hold up this, this stock, AYX, I think will be very critical going forward. It'll tell us a lot about the, uh, the strength of, of the pullback in high growth. So definitely keep an eye out for that one. If things start to look, if things start to hold up well, this may be the first high growth stock that I end up investing in, um, along with Fortinet, as soon as cybersecurity gives me a little bit more momentum. Uh, they kind of got hit today off of Okta's earnings. Okta went down, I think. Two and a half, three percent. I didn't read the quarter. Um, I just saw the headlines and uh, looked like I had a bad day. Doesn't look like it's breaking down yet, but um, definitely something to monitor. This leader is definitely one that generates a lot of momentum for the industry. So I'm not surprised that that Fortinet and and probably Zscaler was down. Oh, Zscaler was up. Let's see, CrowdStrike slightly up. Okay, you know what? Maybe it's just. I guess it's just uh, individually CyberArk. Okay, let me see, Lidos. You know, at this point, okay, most of them look like they were fine. Lidos, whatever. Um, it's another one. I think that's pretty much it for cybersecurity. Let me see the ETF. Yeah, the ETF, actually, okay, so damn, actually, software did fairly well. I mean, high growth had a very pr pretty good day today in general, so that may have helped it, but. Um, let me see something real quick. Let me see how how um, cybersecurity did compared to other parts of high growth. So Sky, which is a lot of the software and and uh, I think it has some data center stuff, um, definitely some cloud stocks in there. That's an ETF that's strictly that's that's more broad in the high growth space, but tailored to the software, which is a broad industry in in itself. Um, that was up one and a half percent. And then you had hack, which is a strictly cybersecurity ETF. Okay. It was up 0.5%. So there was clearly some underperformance relative to its growth, um, its growth peers, because usually cybersecurity and, and software, they, they move hand in hand. They're both next gen technologies that, that are scheduled to see more growth down the line. Um, but once again, Fortinet, AYX, those are the two that I think I will be paying attention to and, and hopefully getting into if, if high growth shows me some momentum after it, it has some type of pause or pullback. I think I'll know it when I see it. I'll probably end up covering my, my Roku and my Coop short at, at that time. And then hopefully I get the signs to go long um, soon after.
But anyways, I think that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, if you guys like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I'm going to, once again, try and do this uh, Wednesday and Friday. And I think Sunday, I'm going to be joined by Amol. So uh, go ahead and keep your ears out for that. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great night and um, happy trading. Peace.